Warning, this game contains content that might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer's discretion is advised. You wake up in your bed, not remembering the night before. Heck, you can't even remember your name. In your hungover state, you attempt to remember. It's your name. It's lying. You say your name out loud. It's foreign on your lips, despite you having heard it your whole life. You rise from the cluster of motel sheets, rubbing your hair before getting up completely. You should shower. You're starting to smell a little ripe. You head to the shower. The motel now very familiar to you at this point. You've been down on your luck lately. And this is your last night here. You only have a couple dollars left. You clamber into the motel shower, turning on the water and beginning to wash yourself. You find yourself in deep thought. Who are you? Besides, say, being living in a motel room. My pronouns, uh... He, he, she, they, uh, I will go with, uh, he this time. That makes sense. You begin to wash yourself, starting with your chest. You notice that. Oh! Well, I'm definitely gonna need to censor this. I have a chest. I have pecs. You wash your chest like normal, making sure to get it all clean. You decide to wash your lower region. Ah! Well, uh... What am I going on? I am an eldritch abomination with nothing. There's nothing down there. There's no, there's no penis. There's no, well, there's no hole. It's nothing. You wash yourself, making sure to get all the nooks and crannies. Despite not having <laughs> many nooks and crannies, the water runs over you, feeling, well, really nice. You needed this. After you shower, you proceed to the window, take a look at the town a few stories below. You decide this is the day you will change your life. Where do you want to go? Let's go to the gas station, because I know y'all are feral for Jack, so let's go. You decide to go to the gas station for snacks. Might as well put those last couple of dollars to use. You exit a motel and walk across the street and down the block, noticing the small town of Little Rock is not exceptionally busy this day. This is a gas station slash convenience store of Little Rock. This place is probably one of the only things here that is constantly updated. Mainly because of corporate greed. And our lack of any major grocery store. You used to live here as a kid, but this is the first time you've been back in a long while. Heck, you practically don't recognize the place. So many new brands, new lighting, even a new clerk. So many brands and snacks catch your eye. You aren't sure what to get. A particular brand of lollipops catches your eyes. You grab a box, then head towards the drinks. Well, inside the gas station, you notice it's pretty empty, except someone looking around the beer cooler. He's large, towering over you for even from a distance. He turns, a case of beer looking puny in his hands. He's flush, clearly already drunk. You both lock eyes. Oh, hey. Why do you look so soft in this game? Like, I remember you from Court and Cowboys, and you were a rough, gruff man. Over here, you look like a softie. You look like someone I could just squish into a marshmallow. He seems a little startled by you, but happy nonetheless. I haven't seen you around here before. What's the name, sugar? The pet name is strange to hear, especially regarding someone like you. A shy response, happy response, surprise response. He'll give a happy response. Oh, hey, my name's Lion. He seems genuinely like a nice person. His smile makes you feel warm and fuzzy. His smile somehow manages to get even more cheery. Nice to meet you, Lion. Name's Jack. That's a super cute name. You don't recognize him, but seems super kind. He enters the empty checkout line, pausing and turning to you. He gives you an intrigued look, eyes eating you up. He seems to be deciding something before he speaks. You take the opportunity to enter the empty checkout line behind him. He turns to the counter instead. Here, just this beer and whatever the person behind me wants as well. He beams, look at you with a flushed expression. You're honestly quite surprised. Uh, speak with admiration, speak with shock. I don't know what's the right choice here. Uh, I will probably speak with, uh, admiration. Because why don't we just like, why don't we just like cozy up ourselves to Jack? Nothing can go wrong from this. Thank you so much. I really needed that. You're pretty sure you only have a dollar fifty in your pocket. Of course, everyone needs help during a hard time. He happily places a wad of bills onto the counter, all one surprisingly. 
He gives you a small wave before heading out, making sure to stuff a couple of those bills into the tip jaw. Keep your chin up, I promise. Things will get better. How assuring. You check out your snacks, still a bit enamored by the situation. The gas station attendant seems unfazed by your goofy expression. He hands you the grocery bag and you look at your snacks with excitement. Maybe things aren't all that bad. Thank you. You turn and head out of the gas station. Where should you go to enjoy your snacks? Back to your motel room, the park. We were supposed to go to the park. Why don't we go to the park? Why not? You head to the park. Feeling pretty jazzed about eating outside for the first time in a long time. The park looks so pretty in this lighting. You take a seat on your bench, located near the entrance, opening up your soda and enjoying the cool late afternoon breeze. What are you going to do tonight? You aren't really sure. Your thoughts are cut off by the sounds of police sirens. You notice that there's a good amount of police investigating the woods. Maybe it's time to start heading back to the motel. You head to the motel, walking along the same path you took to get there. You pass the gas station, making a turn towards the motel. It's called Shady Swallows. <laughs> it's called what? I could go for a Shady Swallow. Anyway. <laughs> Swallows. You head towards the parking lot, make your way in the semi-dark towards the motel room. You feel as though you're being watched. You start to walk faster. Maybe it's just your imagination. You decide to go with that until you hear footsteps behind you. Look behind you. You look behind you. Someone's walking and can't make out his face because he's wearing a strange mask. He's also holding what looks to be a crowbar. You run. Help! He rushes up to you, grabbing you with one large hand. He reeks of alcohol. It's Jack, ain't it? You struggle. His grip is too strong. But there's no use. He hits you on the head. In the darkness, you can't comprehend what is happening to you. Anything could be happening. But if he's taking your organs for the black market? Or you're gonna be someone's lunch? All of these things run through your mind, and you find it hard to focus on waking up. Where am I? You can't seem to keep your eyes open. You're so tired. Your eyelids feel so heavy. You strain your eyes, but manage to keep them open. What the? You're in some kind of unfamiliar bedroom. It smells. Surprisingly, not bad. You attempt to move. Your hands are held together with duct tape. Eh, uh, I'm not gonna do anything. I know screaming for help or attempting to get free is just gonna get me, like... It's just gonna screw me over, so I'm not gonna do anything. You decide to be tactical, staying still. You hear footsteps. The door opens and someone walks inside. Hey, you. You're awake. Hi, Jack. Good to see you. Hey, um, any idea where we are? It's that guy from the gas station. I'm glad, too. Was worried for a bit there. He's holding a plate of some food. You're a feisty one. You gulp. I like that. Oh. Oh, no. He crouches in front of you, still extremely tall. Eh, I can't attack him or stay quiet. Might as well ask him what he's doing. I mean, I can stay quiet. But I feel like he would appreciate if we, you know, have a conversation. I mean, heck, always keep your captor, um, wait, no. Always keep your captee? What are you, you're my kidnapper? I know. Now, always keep them entertained, like, make sure that they feel welcome at home. Yeah, ask him why he's doing this. Why are you doing this? He gives you a dopey little smile, like he's in love. Well, I just knew I'd ha have to have you as soon as I laid eyes on you. I've come to the conclusion that taking matters into my own hands tends to do better than if I let them go on their own. He lets a small little sigh, as if he's had to explain this a few times. This is the easiest way to make sure you're mine. Your nose picks up on the aroma coming from the plate in its grip. It's a bit dark, but you think it can make out chicken tenders on the You made chicken tendies? Thank you, Jack. Maybe some packets of sauce on the side. And french fries. Your stomach rumbles with anticipation. Jack watches you before taking a seat, crisscross in front of you. He seems eager to feed you. You hungry? I don't know what you like yet. And I'll admit, I'm not the best cook. But these kind of foods seem pretty safe. He sort of shrugs. Eh, except food. I, mean, I, I ain't vegetarian, and heck, who am I to refuse like a good meal? You look over at him with, with interest. You were so hungry. Smells good. I'm glad. Here. 
He sets the plate down, reaching and moving to pry the tape from your hands. He happily rips the tape from your wrists. Hey! Ow! Don't be silly. It couldn't have hurt that bad. You rub your wrist, enjoying the feeling of being free. He offers you the plate with ease. You grab it, pulling it to your lap before you begin to eat. He seems pretty delighted by this and you begin to wonder if maybe he had done something to it. Your clear vigor to eat seems to die down. Did you do something to this? What? He almost looks offended. I know. What if he poisoned it or something? He shakes his head. Trust me, I don't want you dead. If I wonder you dead, you'd be dead. He shrugs. He startles you a little, but you begin to eat. It's weird having someone watch you eat. Have you not uh, had dinner with someone before? I mean, it happens from time to time. Thank you? Of course. I can't have you starving on me. I need you. He laughs softly. To keep your figure, of course. He blinks a few times before getting a hold of himself. You gulp, continuing to eat your fries. Do you have any water? Uh, he looks around before turning to grab something from his bed. Uh, let's see, ask him about his posters, wait quietly. <laughs> Why would I want to attack Jack? I know that's an option, but I don't want to attack Jack. Like heck, I'm in it for the long game here. Uh, ask him about his posters. Oh, those. He roots around for something on his bed before instead finding whatever it is on the side table. He sits down uh, right in front of you. They're just things I like. I like scary movies, and I've liked Batman ever since I can remember. He sort of shrugs awkwardly. The other stuff is mainly things friends have gotten for me. This artist I knew from college gave me those drawings. You find yourself nibbling on fries as he speaks. He's actually quite charming. So I put him up. And other things. He sighs a little, giving you a warm smile. He offers something to you. It's an energy. Jack, you know exactly the weight of my heart. It's not exactly water. He seems embarrassed, but attempts to keep his smile. And I'll be honest, as much as I love you, I don't think I trust you enough to go to my kitchen without you tied up for me. So to keep me safe and to put my mind at ease, I present to you, he makes a goofy voice, embalming fluid. <laughs> Wait, wait, why would you call your energy drink embalming fluid? Does it taste that bad to you? He chuckles. I know, I like him. You look at a drink. Huh. You open it up, take it a sip. How is it? It burns, but you feel good. It isn't bad. Good. He sits back down in front of you, sighing warmly. You eat up the rest of your chicken tendies and eat your fries. He watches intently. I'm done. You can't eat anymore. It... it was as tasty as great value chicken tenders can be. He takes the plate, sitting up with a small smile. He leans, duct taping your hands back together. There we go. I was thinking we could watch a movie. I don't know what you like, but I was thinking we could browse and find something we both enjoy. He's acting like you've been dating for years. You know what? I'm gonna go along with it! Well, why would I- why would I not respond? I would love to watch a good horror movie right now. I decided to play along. Well, we'll have to take a look. You tell him a smile, trying to convince him. He falls for debate. Yeah, sounds good. He leans ahead, grabbing your shoulders and hoisting you up to stand. Your legs feel like jello. Can you walk? He asks this softly, voice terrifyingly caring. You can feel it picking at your sa- Why would it be picking at my sanity? What sanity do I have left? Like, God, my- <laughs> Yeah, I can. He nods, guiding you to his door before opening it. Also, I'm sorry to wonder, okay, is it my own sanity dropping or is the game gauging how much sanity I actually have? Because to be fair, I'd have to be pretty mad to just go along with all this. Down the hall, you make it to his living room. You look around, then he pats a large cage next to a sofa. It's huge, probably meant for a large dog. Come on, in you go. Before you have a chance to struggle or fight back, he hoists you up, pushing you into a cage. With quickness, he slams the door shut, lucky with padlock. There we go. That wasn't so hard, right? How could it be hard? It was one who threw you in here. He looks at you, seeming to be making mental decisions in real time. You know, this is for your own good. He sort of pauses, look at you. Why does he look at you like that? You know. I'm just thinking of what I want to do to you right now. He moves closer to the cage, peering inside. 
How bad do you want to get out of cage, huh? What would you do? His voice is a bit breathy. You weren't sure what to do, really. Then it clicks. Flirt with him, ignore him, yell at him. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna flirt with him? Why not? Why not? I know that's gonna lead to something, like, amazingly terrible, but why not? In a way, the mood is set, and you do want to get out of this cage. Plus, you sort of groan on you. In some sick way, his tone makes you excited. I'd do anything, Jack. Your tone is what makes him so delighted. Oh, really? Anything. He pulls you out of cage, hoists you up against his chest. First thing he does is sort of admire you. Anything, huh? He retrieves something from his pocket, holding a wrist behind you as he pushes. A uh, knife blade? Right through the tape, he puts the knife back into his pocket, ripping the tape off your wrist. Then he tosses you onto the sofa, causing you to balance a little on impact. It smells a little like cigarette smoke and weed. Maybe like some sort of body spray too. Oh, you watch as he pulls his shirt off. Clearly the kind of guy who doesn't like much restriction. You sort of flinch, but he clearly isn't done. Yay! <laughs> then he gets on top of you with ease, pinning you beneath him. You know, they have been imagining this moment since I laid eyes on you. He reaches down, grabbing your thighs. You shudder, realizing what you got yourself into. You're so perfect for me. His hand moves, one holding himself over you while the other pulls up your shirt. His fingers dance along your smooth chest before he smirks at you. You're so cute. He grabs the collar of your shirt, and with a loud rip, he pulls hard, it tearing along the neck hole and downward. I hope he at least prepared like a little rip down like the front, otherwise that would have hurt. Hey! Shh. He saw it laughs before pulling the now ripped fabric off of you. Much better. Your heart beats fast, and strangely enough, you feel exposed despite every nothing. Like, heck, there's nothing down here, there's nothing down there. Like, I don't know what he's so excited for. There's nothing. There's nothing there. He stares in awe as he pulls his pants back up. You're f perfect. His voice is almost like a growl, making you feel weird. He looks from you to the cage as if deciding something. Please don't put me back in there. You see his expression sort of softens. He reaches down, pick you up, and take you back over it. Also, yes, I did skip a scene. Yes, if you guys do want to see that, despite the lack of parts, there was nothing down there for me. Hey, uh, you can check it out on my Patreon. But anyway, he pushes you back in, shutting the gate behind. Why? Why? I did everything once, and it's not like I'm gonna like run. It's not like I'm gonna like attack you midway through. I mean, heck, like anyone else playing this might, but not me. I just, like, I just want to have a good time, Jack. I just want to watch the goddamn movie, maybe grab some popcorn, maybe, like, have a sip of some soda if you got any. Gosh darn it. Being in the cage is so much different when you're naked. You shiver. Hey. I thought that, I thought that meant I wasn't going to get locked in here. He shrugs, giving an apologetic smile. Well, I promise, I'll make it better. He turns, disappearing a moment down the hall. Will it leave me a couch in here so I wouldn't have to freeze my butt off. What the frick? Did any of that mean anything? He comes back with a blanket in hand and a pillow. I appreciate it. I would appreciate more if I wasn't in a cage. Here. He opens a cage only to throw in a blanket and pillow. Better than nothing, right? Thanks. Though you don't sound very thankful. I'll see you in the morning, alright? He keeps staring at the cage floor, wrapped up in the blankets. Then he turns off the lights. The, the idea of sleeping here hurts. You'd much rather be... Wait. Your hands are free! He didn't replace the tape. At your newfound freedom, you quickly attempt to escape the crate. You stick your fingers through the holes, attempting to fiddle with a padlock. But you find that you're struggling to... Maybe if you just... Shove your hand through the bar? You shove hard, your hand slipping between the bars. Oh shit. Your wrist is pinched between the bars, but you just continue to try and get the padlock off somehow. You feel a bead of sweat roll down your forehead from the intense feeling that you might escape. After a few moments of trying, you realize the attempt is useless. Your hand is stuck. How will you get out of the bars? You try to pull at first, but it shakes the cage. 
That's a bit too loud. You shiver, reaching slowly with your free hand, trying to pull the bar so you can pull your hand down. It doesn't seem to work. Your wrist starting to turn red from the pressure. Shit. You gulp, starting to panic. How do you get out? Your arm up and... Your arm up and twisted strangely. Strangely uncomfortable. Yeah, screw it. You pull hard with a strange rattle. Your wrist is free from the boss. Yeah, frick. You clutch it to your chest quickly. It hurts. You curl up, letting out a small breath of pain. You must have dislocated it or something. What a mistake. You need more sleep. How else would you have a clear mind to get the frick out of here? You squeeze your eyes shut, hoping that does the trick. Your mind is buzzing with all this information. It slowly starts to drip away. Then you fall asleep. Lion. What was that? Lion! You're being touched? Lion! What? You sit up, realizing the cage door is open. Hey, sugar. Missed you. It seems to be holding something. Got you some clothes. Oh, thanks, Jack. I needed that. They'll probably be big on you, but that's all right. We can focus on getting you a proper wardrobe in the future. He holds a hand out, as if to offer to help you out of the cage. Yeah, I'll take his hand. Reach out for him, and he takes your hand, pulling to help you out. His eyes widen. He pulls you close, holding up your hand. He seems to examine it, noticing a large, dark bruise. He wins at his grip. How did you get... How did you get these? I'll be honest? Ugh. Uh, got my arm stuck in a cage. When I pull it out, I guess I managed to sprain it. Well, we'll have to figure it out together, yeah? Looks like it's just a sprain. Which means there's not much we can do. My dad would have just told me to rub some dirt on it. We saw it laughs a little, letting go of your hand. Sigh relief. I was gonna have you help me make breakfast, but with your hand like that... It would just be silly. You get dressed, honey. I'll make it something to eat. You feel strange with his pet names. Why did you like that? It disappears into the kitchen, leaving you alone in the living room. The clothes are sloppily folded, resting on the arm of the couch for you. You put him on, nervous as you watch him. Take a seat. I'll make it something to eat. You find yourself staring at him as he heads into the kitchen. Uh, uh, should I follow him to the kitchen? I have no idea. Uh, yeah. You aren't sure what it is, but you decide to follow him instead. He went to the kitchen, watching as he seems to be preparing two large bowls of cereal. It's a sweet kind, the sort of stuff they'll rot your teeth out. He's humming, he's humming some pop song you can barely remember. He finally notices you, turning to face you. Hey, sugar. He looks you over, turning his head a little. What's wrong? You weren't even sure why you came in here. He watches you with kind eyes, a soft, concerned expression despite the ever constant smile. Uh, ask to help? Do you need any help? For breakfast? Nah, I'm fine, love. You both saw a look at each other. Like some sort of screwed up staring contest. He looks over you. What is he thinking? He looks away, putting something back into the fridge. Then he walks up to you. He leans, so he's eye level with you. A strange little smile is playing on his lips. You've come to know that this is his thinking face. You're cute, lion. He reaches out, giving your cheek a soft squeeze before standing straight. I like when you're all like this. How sweet. He sort of laughs. Really reminds me that this was a good decision. He offers you a bowl of cereal. Your stomach growls. Go to the living room with this. I'll sit with you. You listen to him going to the living room with your bowl. You aren't sure what to do. You sit down, waiting for him to accompany you. He comes up, a bowl in his hand as he sits. You watch him as he takes the first bite. As you both eat, you can't help but notice the striking size difference between the two of you. His bowl looks normal sized in his hands, and he paused at a TV remote before grabbing it, turning it on. Some sort of game show is on, but he isn't pleased as he clicks through some of the channels. You don't seem to recognize any of them, and you wonder if it has to do with the strange box hard drive plugged into his TV. He pauses on one, loud bouncy music playing as he debates. There are three panels. Three people seem to be arguing as the announcer continues to raise the bid. Bid? Before he can continue watching, he flips through a couple more, stopping on The Price is Right. Wait, was that a reference to, uh, The Price of Flesh? Would be pretty interesting, actually, like, if that was a reference to that. You eat the cereal. The sweet crisps and marshmallows hit your tongue. It's, well, delightful. You really needed this. He finishes his food before you, setting the empty bowl down on the coffee table. Yeah, I'm visiting my sister today. He watches the TV, looking straight ahead. 
You take another bite of cereal, fishing for more marshmallows. Eh, uh, I'll ask about his sister. Yeah. What's your sister like? He seems surprised by your answer, by your question. She's great. A really cool person. She lives like out in the boonies. He adjusts his sitting position so he's more comfortable. Lick stretching far under the coffee table. I visit her weekly. She gets sort of lonely. Strangely enough, by the tone of his voice, you take it that he's the one. Like, you take it as he's the one who gets lonely. He stands, turning to look at you. Your mind races and you realize that with him leaving, you'll be stuffed back into your damn cage. You have to think. Convince him? Please, let me stay out of cage. While you're gone, he stares at you, confused presumably. I'll do anything. I... You realize begging like this isn't gonna work. He thinks you like him back. You decide to switch up your pitch. I could get the dishes done, of course. Maybe some laundry. I can't help out around here if I'm stuck in a cage, right? He stares a little. You're right. I'm trusting you, okay? He walks up, giving you a small kiss on a cheek. Be good, okay? He heads out the front door, the way he shuts it, shaking the house. You stand awkwardly. What do you do? Eh, look around. You decide to look around the small house. Firstly, you go to the living room again. Then you look around the kitchen. And his bedroom. As you're walking, the floorboards squeak beneath the carpet. You dig around, snooping as you look for anything that could help you. Then you find it in his dresser. A gun. It'll be good! You have to be a good boy, right? You wouldn't want to disappoint him. What the frick? You shake your head. There's no way. He's getting to you, that's all. You're done exploring. You leave the gun, heading back to the living room. Your legs feel so nice when they aren't cramped up in that cage. You collapse on the sofa, feeling sort of exhausted. Maybe you should get some sleep. You remember what you told him, though. It's too late. You're out like a light. When you wake up, you find a warm body next to you. Jack is also asleep, arm curled around you. It's comforting. You snuggle closer without a second thought, falling asleep in his arms. You survived! He never knew. Huh. Okay, we're gonna get with just one more ending out of this, which is like, what happens if we grab the gun? So, hey, let's go back. Let's be naughty. You pick it up. Your heart beats. It's really heavy, so it must be loaded, right? You look around before hiding it in your waistband. You decide... You continue to walk around, exploring the house before deciding what to do. When you're back in the living room, you take a seat on the couch. What to do? You turn on TV, flipping through some channels. You wonder what sort of cable box this is. Some sort of shows seem perfectly normal, others are just vile and poorly put together. Some of the stuff you see, you convince yourself it's just a horror movie playing. As you flick around, you land on some Hallmark movie, not in English. You also notice he uses English subtitles. You wonder why. Won't matter. You hear him fiddle with a lot before opening the door. You watch, hand holding the gun. He looks at you. What you doing? Got a little excited? You notice with how your hand is in your pants. This all looks strange. You whip out the gun, quick to aim it at him. His smile drops, but it's a delayed reaction, as if he had to put some thought into it. What are you doing, sweetheart? You gulp. Your finger slams the trigger, firing the gun without a second thought. It hits him in the chest. Wow, I... I didn't... He coughs. I didn't expect you to do that. He saw just stares at you. Don't you love me? He's crying. Or laughing. He can't really tell as he sinks to his knees, then collapses to the floor. He's still breathing. A large puddle of blood begins to bloom. He's going to die. You shoot again. You won't let him live. Nope. You survive. One shot, two shot, three shots, four shots. All I hear is gunshots. This is where the fun stops. Bodies drop, hit the floor, music's off, party stops, everybody hit the door, someone's, somebody's licking shots. Well, damn. Anyway, that's all for Lover's Trophy. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want me to come back uh, for part two of this, where we go through the other guy's route, I forgot what's his name. Just let me know in the comments below. I might be exploring more murder sims soon enough. Uh, of course, like, these games are for those who are 18 and above, so if you weren't of that age, like, like please, uh, refrain from playing these. I mean, they are a lot more intense than we make them out to be. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day, and as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.